Saturation is one of those things we don't think about very often, but it really makes a difference in how great your photo can be. I hope you're wearing your brain today because we're going to be covering a lot. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. And this is Flurn, the Internet's most amazing community based around helping you get more awesomer. That's a word. I made it up just now. Let's go over the contest winners from last week. Last week's contest was awesome. We did putting a girl on a mushroom and so many people submitted awesome entries. It was actually pretty hard to pick. But here are the top five winners from the contest. First one is Rick. You did an awesome job adding effects to it like fairies and glowing things and all just all kinds of awesomeness. I liked it. I'm going to practice my Swedish. Erikur won a <laughs> the Flurn Pro. You did an awesome job creating a rim light on the fairy and using different colors that match the background. Very, very hard stuff to do and you did a really good job with it. So congrats on that. And if I said your name wrong, I apologize. You can tell me how to fix it. Sebastian added a different background, which actually worked really well with this image. So good job with that. And you did your depth of field calculations also. Right on, dude. Nick submitted an image and then he went back and worked on it more and more and more and then submitted another image, which is like, says that he really cares and he saw something and wasn't exactly happy with it. So wet him back and did it again. So definitely a lot of effort in there apparent. So you also won a Flurm Pro. And Ian mostly won because he used the word flare in his description with a PH. And I thought that was really cool. All right, guys, as always, I designed these contests so they really help you out. And this week is no exception. We're going to be learning about color and some very, very cool tricks with saturation and things that they're going to make a really big difference in how you see images as a whole and then how you edit as well. So an example here, basically we've got this image and it's a really, really good landscape and it can be really tough to know when you see colors in an image that you like. It can be tough to know if you like the tones, if you like the saturations, if you like the values and I've come up with a couple of ways to kind of divide those out because some people are really good at just like they can tell color. They can look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's a 10% saturation, things like that. I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people who doesn't really see color that well. So I have to come up with all these strategies on how to break it down. And I think it's going to help you guys out a lot too, because if you're not one of those like natural artists, these, these tools that I've come up with are really great and they help you see colors and variations a lot better and help you understand what's going on with the coloring of an image that can just, it can make a real difference in how you edit. So let's look at breaking down the saturations here. For this, you're gonna need a couple different layers. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of everything and choose a nice pink color because pink's my faves. Option delete is gonna fill with that color. Now I'm gonna hit Command J to make a duplicate of that layer. And then I'm gonna go up to my adjustment layers and click on hue saturation and bring this all the way up. Now eh, right about there. Okay, and that's all we need to do. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to use these layers. The first one we're gonna change from normal, we're gonna change this to luminosity. And what this does, it kind of, it might be hard to see here, but it's going to take away all of your values. So the only thing you're seeing actually is color. And you can see there's not a whole lot of color in this image. It's mostly gray, but there is some green in the image. Now, if you want to bring that up so you can just see it a little better, that's when you bring your hue saturation and you turn that on. Okay, so this is taking just the lights and darks away. So you only see the color. And then this is just going to bring that color up so you can see it a little bit better. And now it's really, really obvious how they've edited this image. They've used saturation as a way to add a vignette, which is very cool. Not many people do that. You can see this gray areas, basically anything that's gray is not saturated. Anything that is green in this case is saturated. So they're using the, they're using desaturation as a way to add a vignette on this image. Not only that, but you can see how they're selectively desaturating these areas in the shadows. And that's something that you really will run across. Saturation exists more in highlights than it does in shadows. So that's a really great way to add a little bit of interest to your highlights. And then here in the forest in the background, they've taken that entire area and desaturated all of it. And doing that is what gives this image that effect, that really kind of like misty effect. It, it almost looks, you know, it looks like winter. It just looks kind of cold back there, but it's not that they've, change the color or added the color or messed with the hue really they've just taken down the saturation and even here like this is this vignette that we looked at earlier you can see it here the desaturation vignette that they've got going on in this it really does look good it looks natural and um it has a great effect so when you're doing this sort of thing don't bring the saturation like all the way back down to zero you can see here there is some saturation still left in these areas but 
bring that saturation down selectively can help draw your attention to specific areas. Now, why is this guy on here, this other pink layer? Well, this we're gonna set from normal down to hue. So now what we're seeing is if you're having trouble telling the difference of what's going on, let's say you have a lot of different colors in your image and you kind of have a, a little bit of trouble telling the difference of like, okay, is this, you know, at this point you might have some blues or greens or yellows in there and you, you can't really tell the relative saturations by bringing everything to the same hue now you really just see saturation. So everything is the same hue, and we really are just seeing just the relative saturations in this image. And you can see very clearly how saturation plays a role in this image. And that might have been not as obvious here. So these three layers are a really great way to just check that, and then you can use that kind of knowledge and that way of seeing things to replicate it in your own work, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So let's bring these layers, um, onto this other image, which is very saturated. There we go. Okay, so the first layer we have is, this is an awesome image, I love it. But you can see that they didn't, different from the other image, they're not really using saturation as a way to draw the viewer's attention here. Everything is very saturated. Now, I don't necessarily dislike that, but because everything is so saturated, it is still a little bit tough for me to know what I'm supposed to be looking at because there's there's so much going on here. And we can kind of enhance that a little bit and it's just gonna make it a little bit more clear and add the attention right to the person that we wanna do that. Okay, let's turn this la layer back on and this is gonna bring on your relative luminosity. So we can see everything is the same amount of light and dark here. There is no highlight, there is no shadow. All we're seeing is saturation and color. Now in this case, I don't think bumping up the saturation of everything is really that necessary because we can see it pretty well. But it is still tough to tell whether, like, can you look at this blue right there and tell me if it's more saturated than the the pinks or sort of the reds or the magentas in her hair? Like, it's a little bit tough still to tell if this area is more saturated or if this area is more saturated. So that's when we can bring in this hue layer. And now what it's going to do is it's going to tell you all of your relative saturations. So Everything is the same luminosity. If I turn that invisible, you can see that that's, okay, it's all just the same hue now. But turning everything to the same luminosity, we can see the areas that look more saturated just are. So we can see that this area in the feather here is not as saturated as what's going on in the hat there. And if I turn both of those off, it might be pretty tough to tell that. Like, is this area as saturated as right there? I'm not so sure. But now, it's a lot easier to tell all of your relative saturations. So this is a great way to analyze images and you can just see like, okay, maybe if I took down saturations over here and things like that, it would help bring attention back to my subject. All right, you guys ready to keep going with it? Let's do it. We're gonna add a new layer on here. So this is these are what I would consider your check layers. These are not layers you'd actually put in your final. These are just there so you can see your saturations in the image a little bit better. And you can use images like, pull images off the internet and just do this you know, a little check to them and it'll help you understand color a little bit better. I do it all the time and it really works. So we're gonna grab a new layer here above my background layer and I'm gonna hit shift backspace, we'll just fill it 50% gray. Okay, now this layer we're going to use to selectively desaturate some of our shadows. So I'm gonna take this from normal down to saturation and it's put it in black and white because there's no saturation in our shadows or there's no saturation in this color. Now, I want it to only be visible where my shadows are. Remember we said earlier that saturation is greater where your highlights are and less great, less great <laughs> where your shadows are. So we're gonna double click on this and I'm going to tell it, let's just arrange everything. There we go. I'm going to tell this holding alter option to not be visible where the highlights are. There we go. And as I bring that from the right to the left, we can bring that one over too. You can see, let's hit okay there that it is in fact only making the saturation lower in the shadows. And even just that effect really does, it gives it that kind of like film effect that I really like, you see it in magazines and things like that. So a very nice effect to desaturate some of your shadows. Now if you want to go ahead and bring your saturation back in some of these areas, like the eyes and her hair and her hat and things like that, this is when you can use your layer mask to go back and add your saturation back to these areas. All right, we'll give the bird a little bit of saturation too. And by doing this, now we're able to selectively draw attention to our subject 
just with saturation. This is not, you know, I'm not making like a big lens flare or anything like that behind her. This is just with saturation here. We're adding this attention back to our subject. So we've taken down the saturation in the rest of the image and now we're bringing it up right over here. There we go. But it's still not gonna be very saturated here in the shadows. And you can see, here's the before and after with that. Just using saturation, it adds a focal point to this image. And it's a lot easier to look directly at your subject now because they are the more saturated part of the image. And we wouldn't have known to do that had we not dissected the saturations of this image earlier. So this is the contest for this weekend and five people are gonna win this one as well. Each of you is gonna get a Flurm Pro. Use saturation in your images. If you have an image that you edited a year ago and you wanna go back and re-edit it, you're like, nah, the colors just really aren't great. A lot of the time, it has nothing to do with your hues or your lights and dark. A lot of the time, it really is your saturation. So the best five people to use saturation to help draw your attention to a specific part of your image are gonna win a Florin Pro. And it's really, really fun to do. You can just lower the saturations down and just paint back where you want it. And you'll be amazed at what, an, like, I mean, you can see it here. Just very quickly and easily, I was able to draw a lot more attention. And I like the image as a whole overall also. Like I like the colors here in the background. I think it's a cool look. So use these effects to add saturation to the areas you want and take away saturation from the areas you don't want. Basically what you want your viewer to look at, keep that sat saturated, everything else, take away the saturation. And uh, top five people to make it awesome using colors are going to win Flurn Pro. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. We had an exciting week tomorrow. We're gonna be talking all about hubris. Hubris. No, not hubris, just you. That's what we're going to do. Have a wonderful day. Bye. I wish I had a camel named Hubris. I would ride her so hard all the way into the desert. <laughs>